Mic checks. So thanks for coming to our workshop. Uh, the, the name is, uh, or the title of our event is uh, the NS, NSU Tribunal. We, we ac accuse, and it's quite suiting that uh, um, we're following up to the uh, event before, uh, which was also the same topic, and so we're approaching this um, issue from, from a lot of sides, and um, now we'd like to, to invite you to join in, in in this debate as well, and we'll, may, in this case, um, take a more concrete or a practical role, and first of all, we'll ask the question, who are, who are we uh, uh, accusing in the first place, and we, we see this as a kind of um, run run up to to an event that we're hosting next year in in Cologne in Germany, uh, which is a big four day um, tribunal, and we're um, planning to do it in Koibstraße itself in in Cologne, which is the the crime scene, the the location of this first um, notorious nail bomb nail bombing and so well what we're uh, trying to achieve is just to find um find a site where all these interests and positions can maybe get together in in one and the same place and at least get some kind of um social dynamic into this whole procedure just to make an also a public statement of saying just this is not uh, the way to go and to just become more involved in in a more practical sense so um, we're from a from a working group, um, which is just a kind of roof organization from from various interest groups and associations and initiatives and working on different aspects of these NSU murders, the whole complex and uh, just s uh, different civil society initiatives who are just saying we want to do something differently in this whole in this whole debate and so um what's happening next we're going to hand out some some little flyers uh some little notes and they're like a kind of template for your accusation for your or you could address it to a specific person who you're maybe um accusing who uh, just imagine someone you would like to tell your thoughts yeah, on this matter. So we've been traveling since three years with the initiative Kreuzstrasse. We're going around the Republic and we're giving talks and talk about what happened in Cologne. And often in other crime scenes, we, we hear very similar stories of how things happened. And a discussion has come up in the last few years and the question always was, what can we do? What about the uh, NSU case? Is there anything we can do? There must be something we can do. And often people call it a tribunal that refers back to the Russell tribunals of the Vietnam War. Can you do something like that? And so we actually sat down and made a concept that is taking shape right now. We have groups in Munich and Berlin, in Jena, Kassel, Cologne, that are working together, several dozen people all over Germany, working on this tribunal project and trying to launch it in May 2017. We want to invite you to participate in this and later we'll give you some more information on how you can support us. What we're planning to do is over several days in Cologne at a very central location close to Kolbstraße to create a forum that is between a, a play and a conference. There's elements where the, the victims of the NSU terror can choose their role if they want to, to come up on stage in persona or have someone in, in their place. And the point is to create a dynamic because 
What we often see is that there's strong interest when you invite people to events regarding this. And there is definitely public interest and many interested people that are working on this. There's journalists that keep uncovering new facts. As anti-fascists and critical lawyers and all of those people, we want to get them together in one place. So maybe we as a tribunal don't manage to actually find out something completely new. And we don't have all the possibilities, but we might be able to make it. And so our idea is to focus everything, to gather everyone. And over several days, get this topic back in the focus of the media, because structural racism in Germany didn't come out of nowhere. And looking at the NSU complex, it, there, it's very obvious that there is a long history of racism in Germany, and it continues. So now it's up to us to say we have to accuse, we have to raise our voice. So we just heard from Fritz that the racist structures are still in place, that uh, secret services are still working with the Nazis, that they're covering things up, and Merkel's promise promise of uh, bringing shedding light on everything is still very far away. So what we're trying to do in the tribunal is indeed to show up the structural nature of racism. That's one big part. Show the race uh, the racist system, and on the other side also to accuse individuals by name and name the people and actors involved. And as you can imagine, that's going to create quite a dynamic response. So nobody should be able to hide between a structure or a system. We want to name exactly those people that destroyed files, that have tried covering things up, that created this network of Nazis. We want to name them and shame them and accuse them. So obviously the Nazis are in, in the networks because the NSU is more than the five people who are currently um, being litigated against in Munich. But instead to show that this network exists, that lots of people here have already found out, to visualize that again, what about the, the covert uh, policemen? More than 20 are known just in this area around the NSU and their leaders too. Somebody mentioned the name Andreas Temme. That's also someone who would find himself on the bench in this, in this tribunal. Also, Falko Buffier is previous leader um, and, and prime minister of the, of the state. So what does it mean when we accuse? Of course, also the policemen and policewomen that have helped oppress the victims. For over seven years in Kalbstraße, the people were treated like the perpetrators. Their houses were searched, their fingerprints taken, they were shown fake photos. They were told their husbands had affairs, spread rumors about the PKK involvement and red light. And lots of people have been involved, including the media, including the journalists that perpetrated the myth of the Döner murders. And that's why we need to put these people into the focus again, put them in the spotlight. And also, we have to look at ourselves, because we as anti-racists have also uh, believed, believed this story and, and didn't realize what actually happened. So where, where were we in 2006 in Kassel when 4,000 people with migrant backgrounds went on the streets and said, no more no more victims, no 10th victims. Five years before NSU revealed themselves, 4,000 people went, protested on the streets in Kassel. And they have realized the continuity of the so-called uh, Cheska murders, as they were called back then, and they realized we could be the next victim, and we weren't there. And that means we now need to stand next to these victims and listen closely what they have to say, and then go on the offensive and accuse. So 
So what's the tribunal part about the tribunal? Well, we obviously don't have the executive or legal powers. We're not going to pro proclaim a verdict and there's not going to be a, a jury as in other forms of a tri uh, tribunal. But what we really want to focus on is the, the, the social accusation, the the prosecution from um, and really trying to find out who's who's responsible for this kind of structural racism. So we don't just want to accept what's uh, what's happening there. Uh, just get out of the 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 lethargy of just uh, well just observing passively and saying what's going on. But we want to uh, get active again. So. Even here, look around, there are so many activists here. So to be able to kind of transform that anger that maybe a lot of people are carrying around with them into a, into a more general, broader social form, that's our, that's our aim. Thanks a lot. So um, I can, well, that's already made it quite clear, hopefully, that... We would like to get some kind of response from you in in form in a, in form a little written statement or just by by asking a question. Well, yeah, there is a question uh, already. Yeah, you can you can come over and and, and grab a microphone. Uh, well, it's um, so. Tell me, so, so people say we have to do something about NSU, and I guess everybody realized, and you said that we have to um, question ourselves a bit. And the question that opens itself up at, uh, to me, I think, is if we talk about NSU, everybody says, yeah, it's, it's obvious, it's about two, uh, three people, Uwe, Uwe and Beate, and you, don't, you, have, you think you know what you're, what you're talking about. And then if you think about last week when Suleiman Tashke's death um, and and uh, the remem memorial, stone? memorial stone is not even visible anymore because of erosion. And then you you talk to uh, anti-fascists, anti-racists, and and friends, and you say this is the fifteenth anniversary of the death of Suleiman Tashke, and people are like who? So he actually is one of the more famous victims because there was a book and a movie and his daughter is going to lots of events and, and talks about it and she's not going to these events because she, she says this is important for me personally to talk about this uh, I think she goes there because she realizes that nobody would remember her and her, her father's situation if she didn't go everywhere anytime politicians show up and tell her story, a story of her family. And she doesn't have to present. She's she has lived through this. Uh, this is something that has destroyed the family, and she doesn't have to keep telling this over and over. But she does. And who's she telling this to? She's not telling that to herself, not not to her mother or her brother. No, she's telling us. She's stepping in front of cameras again and again. And she's, she keeps telling this story, she keeps spreading the word even 16 years after the first murder, the murder of her father, most people will not remember what happened. And most people will not remember what happened to her. And so most people think that just by creating a movie and then adding two more movies where it's about the state, one about the victims, one about the perpetrators, one about the uh, investigators, then also one of the investigators in the movie about the victims, a nice, nice young guy, I wanted to fix some things. Because then you have to add these up, because otherwise it's too crass. It's you can't just show the 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 Turks, uh, the Turkish woman tell her story, tell that her mother was shown a photo of a of a blonde woman, being told that he had an affair, that he has two children with a German wife, that he dealt in drugs, that he was mem of the PKK, these slides keep getting repeated and this is something that she has to oppose over and over. And I think that is just the, the thing that we forgot these things and we don't know these things. And You open up the newspaper and then some people that are a little more in focus like the, the Yoskat family um, 
because one of the uh, a employee of the Office for the Protection of the Constitution has been involved in the murder of her son. And so sometimes the, the camera moves over from the representatives of the state to show the victims. And then it always shows uh, Ismail Yoskat enraptured uh, uh, in case by grief. And then behind him, his wife wearing a headscarf. So we say the media has learned their lesson. They, they realize their responsibilities. So uh, this man, Ismail Yoskat, has found his own son who died in his arms and he goes to every court date where Andreas Temme appears and he goes to each of the investigative committees where Andreas Temme speaks and every time he sees a guy who says, oh, I don't remember. So he stands up in court and says, I want to say something. I want to ask this man questions. And then the judge says, well, what is your, um, what is it going to change? So over and over, and if it's not Andreas Temme or one, or just any, any other member or a Nazi, or it's just, they keep saying, okay, I don't remember, you don't know. Um, so nothing, nothing happens. They, they listen and nothing, nothing comes out. But when Ismail Yoska wants to say something, he doesn't even get to speak. And then they say things like the victims are silent, they're they're um, grieving, and they're not they're not silent. They're being silenced. Aisha Yoska, the mother of of Khaled, said in Cologne in the Belikte festival organized by the city, a festival of community and moving closer together to xenophobia, as racism is often called. And, and Ashiaska was there and she was wearing a headscarf and she didn't say anything. And then somebody sat next to her, a um, good friend of mine, Ibrahim, said to her, Miss Yaska, don't you want to say something? And she said, why should I speak? This is not my event. I'm, I'm not, I haven't been invited to speak here. No, people aren't invited to speak, they're invited as backdrop, and that's the place they, sh they shall take. And so we see it's it's not about the victims being silent or not speaking, it's that nobody's listening to the victims. And these are the kinds of structures that we have to fight. No, no, well, no break in here. Well, what I, what I wanted to say, uh, the the most important part of the the, the tribunal, it sh it should be it should be this, but what actually really gets me down is is something else. It's that it's the things that we found out about the complicity of the state in these things. How many people were involved? That there have been demonstrations um, that actually questioning the legitimacy of these entire organizations, German uh, Secret Service of the Interior, um, Office for the Protection of the Constitution, highly implicated. And so uh, these were the questions we have, to, we have to ask. And so you said, name these people. I, wanted to, I want to name one person who's, who's been very uh, leniently treated. His name is Fritsche. And at, at the time of the uh, National Socialist Underground, murder series well he wasn't he wasn't really uh, the man for the job but uh, and it, it wasn't very good judgment but in the course of this uh, this parliamentary inquiry commission uh, this man was heard this um as a, as a witness, and it it turned out um, well. That's the way the Secret Service people do it. Like, what what on earth do you want, my friend? We don't know what you're talking about, and you're damaging the reputation of of a state organizations. And in this context, the un unbelievable uh, sentence was was said. Um, 
We have to prevent state secrets from coming to light. Just, just think of the implications of that of that sentence. What does that mean? The highest institutions of of our country, they come and say to us, uh, "Look, you have to accept this is a grey zone. You can't look into there. There are things happening there. We just won't ever able to shed light onto the matter because they're just." Uh, kept secret so and i think it's this kind of the 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 blind trust in in the system in the in the um, constitutional office and the secret services the informants in the same way that we got the uh, the stasi uh, documents all the files from the archives and worked it out and i think we have to do the same thing with the german secret services really approach these institutions get access to all the information and go the legal way maybe just uh, we can't just let it uh, let it all flow down the river it's a kind of normalization we're just overwhelmed by the reality of it and it's an unbelievable scandal if you look at it and we're just told to take it at face value things that are all these mysterious details coming up about the sim cards of a uh, an informant who um, police informant or um, state informant who was di uh, who died under mysterious circumstances the, um, his personal items were found in another location that was um, implicated in a crime scene and it's all highly meshed and messy and so uh, the the Turing the, the federal state of Turing has its own um, Secret Service, the Federal Secret Service, and they were also very much complicit in, in, in supporting and building up the, the Turingia um, right-wing cell uh, called Heimatschutz um, um, Home Protection. Um, and this is the kind of thing we will have to just look at uh, look at the information that's been cons compiled in particular in the um, in the eastern federal states Saxonia Thuringia um, there were people organizing weapons um, state informants organizing weapons for the for the right wing terrorists uh, get, getting money and um, rental contracts uh, all kinds of informational of, of activities um, they were just watching all these things happen and basically enabling uh, structures that in in the end would would actually lead to these kind of crimes this series of murders and so my accusation would be just smash these institutions that allowed for this kind of thing to happen yeah Thanks a lot for. No, no, no. That's it's it's everything he said was great, but um, so it's it's not an answer to what he said. And secondly, um, if it's important and and if it's right, um, it's it's too much of an expert's view. You can you could have found all of that out if you had actually talked to the families, to the people on Kolbstraße, to the victims. If you had just listened, do you know? Um, I grew up in in Kolbstraße, and when when the attack happened, I was I was living there, and we all knew that it was not someone from the street, somebody living there, just as the victim was not someone from uh, from the family. So people were talking about uh, drug dealers and um, the, the, the the criminal scene, and I can tell you that. There is no money laundry scene in the street, and even the the drug dealers have grown up with us. So we know these people. Some of them live in the street, and that's why we have always said, "No, no, people, you're looking in the wrong direction." These kinds of people wouldn't use uh, nail bomb attacks because that would risk during their own family. We know, we're not stupid, we know how racism works and how institutional racism works and also how societal racism works. I was playing soccer in Kolbstraße and every second game they said, yeah, but, but don't hurt us if if, uh, if you lose, don't hit us. So even, even before they started this campaign, people knew that this is a, a commercial street, that, that there is not to be any political activism on the street. And what happens? They they bring in this PKK, Hezbollah, they 
didn't end up no, they, they ended up not knowing themselves uh, who to ascribe this to. So in the end, it was just all of them. And there were several people who said after the attack, when I fell to the ground, I was sure it must have been Nazis. And then one of the policemen bends over and, and signals to them to to be quiet and not say that again. And from this point, they shut up. They not only have they not listened, but they've actually been pressured not to use their knowledge, their migrant knowledge. So the hairdresser where the bomb exploded, they gave him two sheets of paper and said, either you're going to name names from the street, someone who might have perpetrated this, or we're going to send the financial authorities on you because we can't check your books. So he said, well, I can't name anyone from the from the street. Uh, there wasn't anyone from the street. And then he got uh, punished by the financial authorities and he had to go back to Turkey, sell his house, just to be able to, to pay up the, the fee. And everybody realized it couldn't have been anyone from the street because it was a nail bomb. And nail bombs aim to injure as many people as possible. And the police didn't want to listen to us. And uh, I, I also make music. So the, the street was getting angry. The people were getting angry. And we walked across the street and friends of mine that I used to play, I uh, used to play uh, football with, and then people were like, hey, what are you doing with this camera, man? Uh, no, 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 it's just a music video. And then I said, you have two minutes and you get out of here, otherwise you're going to destroy the camera. Because they were so tired of being shown and portrayed as criminals. And the one sentence I keep hearing over and over, and that's being repeated because of all the scandals, is that they know exactly who did it, and they know exactly who supported these groups. But they're trying to pin it on us so they can keep up their racism. Yeah, I wanted to say something as well. Um, you you were all kind of addressing the 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 audience, just general German outrage, and I think you've been missing one aspect altogether, I'd like to say that actually uh, us as, as migrants, we, we, we're the ones who've actually won and the Nazis are the one who, who, ones who've lost. That's really my conviction. We've, we already have a society that's, that's mixed, that's not uh, homogeneous and it's, it's um, full of migrants. Um, you could actually claim that and well, we were attacked. The, the Kolbstrasse was attacked. A lot of uh, a lot of businesses were uh, in trouble. But this has improved. Their business is back. They're, they're back again. They're flourishing. The families of the victims. They didn't all go back to Turkey. Or they they're here. Some of the Nazis are are, are stuck in prison. So I don't think they've won. And. The society, this what we already have, is exactly what, what the NSU, the National Socialists, were trying to to attack. But they're they're too late. Basically, they're trying to uh, they're looking backwards and trying to reverse a process that's already taken place. They can't turn back time, but that's what they're trying, and that's what the same right wing new movements in in Germany for the past two years we've had. AfD, Pegida, what these uh, movements are, are pushing, but that it's a lost cause, really. They have uh, they have the idea that um, th that they have a sort of German uh, pure society, but that's an idea that's lost from the from the beginning, and that's something we just have to prove. It can't be uh, just a la lament, lamenting and complaining and accusing. But who 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 am I supposed to address? This is all going on since uh, since the seventies, when we called all these people over here to work, and we had the same discussion at the time when the work was done. Thanks a lot. Um, what did they they 
they wanted to send them home, but they didn't go. They just stayed in in the towns, maybe in 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 the town centers, which were already um, decrepit, and in in they built it back up again. The city centers, they they enliven the communities and uh, the the urban spaces, and in in the large cities in particular, not only in Cologne, in Hamburg, all over the place, and these are. This was a kind of um, well, also attaches to the the left wing wing fantasies that we know uh, maybe well with with occupied houses or squats or communal <laughs> systems. Uh, that's I think that's exactly the point that we don't want to be reduced to the victim role, and so it's us. We're the ones who have won. Okay, thanks. Uh, great, thanks. Uh, lots of um, really. Hey, I'm Gilad Aisha and I'm Germany's integration nightmare number one. You've reduced me to migrantism so often. I have, I, I, I'm, I'm educated and everything, but you keep turning me, reducing me to my, me being a migrant. So I am everything you hate. I'm, I'm totally touched by all the, Crowds. Crowds, crowds sitting here. Uh, I didn't even know you existed. I didn't know. I, th I thought it's only those, but I'm not the only one that thinks that. Uh, lots of us think that because we didn't, we, we never get to know you. I, I didn't know. Come here, come here. Let me hug you. No. <laughs> so th this is the, the positive. This and that. What Massimo was saying. So the truth is, it's it's not bad. It's. You're chilling with your people. I chill with my people. It's not. It's not a bad thing. That's not what it's about. It's about when we see each other. You don't think about asylum seekers and and migrantism. It's about looking eye to eye. So you're talking about NSU and the murders and and it's all. I'm, I'm without words. But my beginning when I was without words, there's already. The headline, the the, the Döner murders. So, who died here? Kebabs? No, I, I didn't even realize we Turks birthed the Döners. It's an identity, and it's it's an attack on my identity. Thanks, Habib understands me. She knows exactly. She she knows what I mean. No, we're all in the same boat here, and your your. All my allies, just without the chewing gum. Okay. You know, you, you know the the Americans came with the chewing gum, and yeah, you, yeah. So no, that's that's just you know, we know we're a minority. We, we don't have a problem being a minority and living here. Our culture is beautiful. It doesn't matter where we go. As he said, give us the worst shitty street in the world, and we're gonna turn into paradise. That's how we are. That that's just how it is. And then you come and you want everything, and yes, and now, and Kreuzberg is beautiful, now we've been gentrified, we've been pushed out, by Ali, you know what I mean? We don't care. Why don't? Why do we not care? Because we just go to the next street. We don't care. We're gonna make that great too. That's just how it is. So, what, what can I tell you? My friends, my brothers, my... We, we have to stick together. We can't go on like this. I, I don't have a problem being a migrant. I'm, my problem is if you look down on me, what's, what's a, a donor murder? Is, is what? A crowd murder? Potato murder? Did anyone ever have a headline of crowds have been murdered? No. She put her children in the freezer. Crowd murder. You know what I mean? It's... Everybody who sits there, every, they, all of them, they're right. We have to do something against it. Because honestly, I'm, I'm sitting here, I think, okay, wait, 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 what's going to happen? What happens? Bernd Höcke or whatever his name is, and Jens and Jonas, whatever his name is. Uh, asshole Höcke, thanks. Didn't know that's an interesting name. So Asshole Höcke sits there and he is a German official. And no one, no one is doing anything. How? How does it work? Why? Why, Habib? Well, I'll ask you. You're so 
Alemani, I'm going to ask you. So how can it be that a racist... He's officially a racist. And he's, he's an official, he's in the Bundestag. How is that possible? So how is that possible? Elections? No, 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 that bastard was not elected. I don't know. Why, do, why don't you know? You can't say we didn't know. The internet exists. That, that's how it is. I have to speak the truth. Are you his lawyer? No? Okay, so what, what does he do? It's, uh, it's, it's against the constitution. He's the leader of the AFD in Thuringia. It's, uh, it's a party, party official. I don't care. I pay taxes. I, I, I pay his, his office with my taxes. That's, that makes it a uh, public office if I pay my taxes for it. See? See? They're, they're, both, they're both public offices. You, you, you need to get education, man. Okay, good point. And I know you don't like it either. Am I right? Am I right? So what, what do you do? What do we do? Tell me. What do we do? <laughs> well, <laughs> seriously. Potato salad and shish kebabs. I'm also hungry, but, but potato salad? I like that. But no, that's not something we here to talk about. Our topic is that racist structures exist. So let me just tell you why you're important to me. Why I don't, I'm not going to kill you. I know you, you always think if you see me like this, you, you're afraid. German angst coming through. Because you created me, okay? Is that, well, it wasn't Erdogan. That was German production, German Hauptschule. This, all of this, all, everything you see. Gorilla mode. Know what I mean? I did this on purpose because then you can see the others more clearly. Because I need you because only you can do that. So, f fuck me. My my life is over. I hit anyone, whatever. No, no. Um, no, it's all about tell. But I don't want my kids to grow up like that. I don't want my kids to grow up in a country where it's normal to say, Ali, great, here's, a, here's an A+. Plus. That, that's what I want to hear. Not, ah, uh, I go and say, hey, they, they, they made racism with me. And I say, ah, heard a bad day. Stop with the relativizations. The, the. We're not doing that to gain advantages. We already have advantages, you know what I mean? It's great. It's, everything's great, you know, a small group. What's up? No, that's, that's how it is. So listen to me when when when... I tell you that you're being racist. Don't send me away. I called the anti-discrimination hotline once and they it's it's hell, really. It's even even worse than a Nazi who insulted me. So what are we gonna do? Who's, who protects me? Who's gonna protect my children? Who? You. All of you, all of you as you sit there. You protect us. We can't do it ourselves. That's just one word. Uh always always have a chip on your shoulder but I don't know if you know but do you, do you know what projections is so if I call you a cunt who's responsible for me calling you a cunt me because I judge you like that or you because you are one so honestly I'm responsible right because I call you a cunt I can also call you an angel from words come from my mouth and if somebody calls it the, the dinner murders and ah that's not just ooh slight mistake that should mean you, you pay you pay a fine you bastard if your mother doesn't birth a dinner right now and you go to jail that's how it should be huh any questions anyone wants to know something why we're so loud that's just how it is any other questions Why do you always drive Mercedes and you're still going to the organic store? We have 18 cousins. One of them has a Mercedes, you know? No, so I want to say fusion, great. I'm, I'm happy you're here. 
I didn't think so many people would come. I thought it was like three people. This is how how interested I think Germans are about their own people, because this this goes against their own people. These these structures have spread so far that everybody thinks it's normal, but it's not. And we have to talk about it more. We have to talk about white privilege, and we have to talk about how we get rid of this shit and how we can become true humans that actually deserve human rights. We can't go to China and be like, ah, oh, you don't have human rights. Because then you're like, well, what's NSU? The, the mother of the, of the man that was murdered when, they, when she wiped up his blood, did she have human rights? Where was her human right? A fucking German human right where? Where was it? As crime scene cleaners, they could have cleaned up. No, the mother has to wipe up the blood. And then expect them to stay quiet. Don't have a chip on their shoulder. Shut up. Don't be so loud. No, the time is over. I came to make our people more, even more aggressive. Know what I mean? Yeah? And you're part of this because we have to do this. It's over. And... I just want to say one thing. So, so seriously, potato, almani, kraut, sucuk, doesn't matter. What's important is, do you get your rights? Do you want to be a German? Stick with your laws. If you, if you want to change them, change democratically. But don't talk about human rights and equal chances and then... Yes, but but because of of, of uh, his, his social standing, he can't go to the to the uh, high school, and it doesn't affect you, just us. So we have to stick together. I think we have to stick together. It's shit. It it stinks. We have a big pile of shit in front of us. We're gonna get rid of it. But this time we're gonna work together. We listen to each other. Everybody knows where to belong. You know where your place is. Nobody wants to become German anymore. And no German has to become a migrant. Why? You know? You know what I mean? Uh, I see. I see. It's a, there's a German. You give me the eye, brother. What do you say? You're right. Well, <laughs> that's just my. Okay. So one thing I want to say is, we we keep. Uh, We, we would be so threatening, but my mother has been threatening me since I was four years old that she's gonna break my jaw and my legs if I don't come to to dinner. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it true? 15 times a day? But we also know she's never actually gonna make good on that, right? We don't have time for that shit. So, Fusion, I wanna say goodbye to you. Just wanna say, hey, talk to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm loud, but why? I'm gonna listen to you. So, watch over each other. Enjoy fusion, enjoy happiness, because that's what we need the most. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say this once. Thanks, you're the best. All of you, out of the brown shit! <laughs> Yeah, okay, great. Uh. Yeah, so, no, we were, we did really mean that seriously, that, that we also want to have your input. Um, so, we'd, we'd like to have a look at your notes, um, even if we're a bit behind uh, on time, but we'd really like to hear your contribution. So, maybe um, if you just um, want to share some of your ideas and stories um, you can also attach them to our to our board outside and so if you want to say something please there are two two mics and you can read it out or um, just hand it in and there's a question from the floor I accuse the 
complicity, the collaboration between civil society and state official official organs. <clears throat> One example. Um, is a secret service um, employee or former employee who uh, still is on the board of the uh, anti-racist um, Amadeo Antonio Foundation in, in, in Berlin. And these are the things we have to address uh, if they're sort of in personal union. I accuse the Federal Republic of Germany who in 1949 well founded its constitutional laws, uh, well intentioned, but maybe with no real sense of what uh, the, the demands of the people were. And in that manner, reinforced or a centralization or top down structures, authoritarian thinking for for generations to come. And the uh, today we have the situation that we have the average person will think it's completely normal to uh, just well mind your own business um not care about the greater cause just turn the other eye uh, turn a blind eye and that's why i want to accuse germany thank you any others? I accuse that on a government level, but also on a societal level, this structural decontextualization and depolitization of right extremist terrorism happens. And going hand in hand with that, the structural non-recognition and boycott of migrant knowledge. I accuse uh, the German judiciary, judiciary system because in the NSU process, but also in other uh, in, in others, racist observations and racist utterances have been taken without question, accepted without question by the by the court when uttered by the accused Nazis or the defenders or witnesses. So this, uh, if if you, anyone uh, wants to say anything else, it doesn't have to be in this, this formal manner. You can just uh, s say what you'd like to say. Um, but one, just on a on a final note, uh, until May of next year, when we're actually uh, doing this um, tribunal, and this will be taking place in Cologne, uh, we're well still looking for s supporters, of course, and there's lots of work to be done. So. Uh, we have a, a big heap of flyers here with us at, at Fusion with a contact, with contacts, and also we're just looking for for supporters still um, to also publicise this into other cities. Maybe just take a few leaflets with you, and maybe also some of this uh, drive to participate yourselves with your personal tribunal thoughts. So what we already have in, in different cities, in, in Berlin, in Cologne, in Kassel, we have, uh, we have the address uh, NSU minus a, tr a tribunal, I think. Um, we have an email address, but in any case, you can contact us and let us know in which way we would like to get involved, maybe even fundraising, because we're going to be mainly um, donation funded. And so this is just for all kinds of preparations for the Tribunal of May. We're still looking for your support. So wait, wait, wait. Any more questions or remarks? 
You know why why I can't make any accusations. I I'm not allowed to. I'm a I'm a refugee. I made some decisions, well, but I I am a certain in a way I'm a privileged migrant. Well, we're we're in this uh, extremely brutalized uh, consumer society. Uh, it's, it's, it has a it has a very strongly Eurocentric view, and this is the uh, the people that I am living together with are the ones who are actually determining my way of life. But I'm not living the same way. I'm not the same part of the European society. Along, alongside, look at uh, Frontex and the, the the crazy love affair between uh, Turkish Premier Erdogan and and German Chancellor Merkel, and I just don't buy it. Exactly, with a, with that sort of tribunal, you can accuse the the. German state and Europe is trying to silence exactly these voices and doesn't give them a possibility to accuse anyone. And in our tribunal, you can. Any more questions or remarks? Maybe also to the num number of guests on stage or further accusations. But in in any case, uh, the the offer is still open. You can get in touch any time. You can leave your remarks and input, and we'd be really happy to see as many of, of, of you as possible next year in May. And thanks a lot for coming. And a big extra applause, sorry, I j almost forgot, because uh, Gillette Aisha came here specifically for this event only, and we're, we're so happy she did and grateful, so give her a big a round of applause. And uh, there's going to be another um, performance right, right afterwards here, um, so with Esther, and if you like, you can just stay on. Thanks a lot.